All right, now let's uh, let's spend a little time looking at cognitive development. A lot of times, when you're interacting with uh, older people, uh, usually this is the thing that tends to uh, stand out in large measure because of memory, uh, because of language, perhaps difficulties, uh, because of of uh, processing speed. All of these things are part of. Uh, what we attach with uh, the various um, areas within adulthood itself. And cognitive development is one of those that uh, kind of gives us clues as to what goes on. So uh, recognition, as the years go on, recognition memory remains strong, although recall, recall begins to decline, especially for information that's not terribly important to them. So recognition, let me give you an example. Um, multiple choice tests, and we'll talk about this in a little bit more um, detail. But multiple choice tests are recognition tests. In other words, you read something and you recognize the fact that um, it is the correct answer. So you do a, a recognition and, and you uh, do a comparison of the information you're reading and you can say, yep, that's right. On the other hand, another uh, aspect of something you will experience as you're here at, at CCU is a essay uh, exam. And essay exams are very different because essentially you not only have to produce the information, which is, uh, which is called recall, all right, but you also have to write about it in some kind of coherent way. But my point is, is that this is what recall is all about, is that essentially I'm asked a question, so what exactly did you eat this morning at breakfast? Now that that's a recall question. I can say, well, I had a couple pieces of toast and, and a, a thing of yogurt. That's recall. On the other hand, it, as people age, this particular area in memory uh, begins to weaken. So they may not be able to recall it directly. Now somebody might say, did you have toast and, and uh, uh, yogurt this morning? And what they'll say is, yes, I did. And that's a recognition. And so each of these things, what you see is uh, basically an increase in time it takes to uh, accomplish pulling this information out of uh, uh, memory. And, and you'll understand that a little bit more as we look, when we look at uh, learning and memory itself. Uh, older people's capacity to learn and remember skills declines less than their verbal recall. So essentially, verbal recall uh, is an example of what we refer to as semantic memory. Uh, and again, these terms will make more sense. You can write them down just so you have them in, in your, your uh, memory stores. But semantic um, knowledge or, or memory is what um, verbal recall oftentimes taps into. On the other hand, um, motor recall, tasks, abilities, uh, things like that, are really non-semantic, non-verbal non knowledge, and uh, that remains relatively strong. So if you're around a grandparent and they're able to do something and you look at them and say, how in the world do you remember to do that after all these years? That's exactly what you're, you're, in, you're uh, uh, touching on is the motor recall. It's a non-verbal. Semantic, on the other hand, is pulling things out and um, verbally reporting them, and that recall is a little bit more difficult. Another thing that's affected is something we refer to as prospective memory. And prospective memory is uh, the memory to remember to do something. Uh, the, and this is one of those times where essentially um, remember to, and, and that uh, kind of memory is difficult because it's a future point. There's nothing to trigger it per se. Um, and 
particularly this remains strong when events can trigger it. So if, if uh, uh, for example, you have your grandmother and you want her to remember to take something with her when she goes, if you put whatever you want her to take with her, with the thing that she will always grab when she goes to an event like a doctor's appointment, then she will remember it. Um, and that remains strong as long as there's an event to help that along, okay? Um, the, the thing that is a little harder is time-based uh, recall. And time-based tasks, remember the, the 8 a.m. meeting, habitual tasks, uh, remembering medication, uh, those sorts of things are far more challenging uh, for people as they age cognitively, and that's exactly why oftentimes they will have alarms and, and uh, day timers and calendars and things like that as long as they use them to remind them of these time-based tasks, and those are quite important. Another dimension of cognitive development looks at people uh, uh, and talks a little bit about different kinds of research, actually, as to how we study this thing. And two things are mentioned that I want to just highlight for you, cross-sectional studies. Um, and again, it, this is useful in a number of contexts. Uh, it's useful here because essentially with cross-sectional uh, studies, we look at people of different ages that are compared with one another, and that's cross-sectional. So it takes a cross-section of uh, an age group and compares them with one another. The other one is longitudinal, and a lot of the research that you will read uh, or you might come across um, for older people follows them uh, through the, the lifespan, if you will. They, they follow them over a long period of time to see the changes that occur uh, in mental abilities and so forth and what, what does change and what doesn't change over the lifespan. And all of those are very much a part of the cognitive backdrop and cognitive development that we see oftentimes occurring in uh, adulthood across the early, middle, and certainly late stages.